Well, uh, thank you, Mike, uh, for the introduction, and thanks for the people listening. Uh, I wanted to talk today about some work with Jabo Zhu at, uh, and Eric Chassinier at uh, Florida State University, the HICOM group, which Eric leads. Uh, we've been in, working together for, uh, for several years. Uh, sorry, I'm hearing echoes and things. Um, we've been working together several years on the HICOM simulations, which they do uh, with increasing resolution. We've been working in this limited area North Atlantic model that goes from 30 south to about 75 or 80 north. Um, and it's now being run globally by Jabo at uh, 112th degree resolution. But to start out with, uh, uh, there's Bill Schmitz's uh, propeller diagram there and a little memory of Bill Schmitz, a great collaborator and friend of ours, both at the uh, FSU group and with me in Woods Hole many years ago. He passed away last December. So we know about the meridional overturning and the uh, red northward branches and the black uh, deep dense overflows. And this, and this third little purple uh, note here of Arctic outflows of very low salinity cold water at the surface. So um, if you're sitting at the Greenland Scotland Ridge, uh, you have you have a sort of a three point water mass uh, uh, theta S diagram to think about. Um, and uh, what we have recently are new observations of deep mixing, which are, now can be compared with models, and it's three-dimensional. And so we want to look three-dimensionally at AMOC as much as possible. So the familiar AMOC stream function uh, in, with Z as a vertical coordinate on the left, or with uh, potential density as a vertical coordinate on the right, we're actually using uh, the uh, this is labeled as a sigma theta uh, surface reference potential density. Uh, most of the labels will be actually sigma two for two kilometer reference, which is what the HICOM model uses. So notable in the overturning stream function, which runs here between 20 south and uh, 75 north, is uh, the, of course, the northward flow of the warm branch, southward flow of the, of the uh, dense uh, overflows and the dense Labrador seawater. The difference between the sigma space and the y and the z space uh, overturning is that there are two uh, basin scale gyres, uh, basin scale overturning cells in the, in the uh, potential density referenced uh, overturning. One is in subtropical mode water region, uh, 18 degree water near uh, between 30 and 40 north, and one is in Labrador Sea uh, latitudes of subpolar Atlantic. And then the, the dense overflows uh, creep in underneath. So those are two notable things. They're both valid diagrams and interesting. The, the true vertical velocity, W, in the left-hand diagram relates to the vorticity equation balancing beta V uh, is F dW dZ. And Alison Gray's uh, PhD thesis with Argo data shows that the, this wonderful planetary vorticity conservation equation um, is, is a, explains a lot of the mid-ocean circulation. And uh, so the, the, both diagrams are interesting and important, but the diapycnal velocity is what appears in the downwelling uh, of, the, of the cooling nor, northward flowing warm waters in the right-hand diagram. So that we begin to see water mass transformation and thermodynamics at work. Notice that this is a sort of seamless uh, northward flow here, a seamless uh, downwelling in the upper ocean as the uh, warm branch of the AMOC cools uh, on its way northward. And of course, that appears somewhat subsurface because averaging east-west, we're actually uh, uh, at different densities. And so, but these are all in the upper mixed layer. So we want to examine the east-west structure of those of those features. Um, this is this is called subpolar gyre. It's not that's not the gyre. This is the overturning cell. It's just that it's located in subpolar latitudes and subtropical latitudes for the for this upper gyre. So I'm going to flip on here, and well, I was I should say a little more about the model, which uh, Jabiro has published many papers now, and they're uh, all worth reading. I would say uh, about this 112th degree model, 32 or six to 64 layers, depending on uh, which run, uh, 30 south to 80 north, ocean only, forced by climatological mean winds with an annual cycle, and and we also they have also done. Uh, runs 35 or so years of interannually varying atmospheric forcing. So, and you can see Jabo's papers in JGR about that. HICOM is, 
is isopycnal in the deep water and it transitions to Z levels in the upper ocean. So that the two stream functions, uh, the, sorry, the right-hand uh, density space stream function is the, is the first of these uh, four panels um, showing the same features. But you'll notice that there's some drift upwards in the deep water and that's actually a, 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 an unsteadiness of the model. And so if the volume change is taken out, then we have a, a water mass transformation based uh, overturning stream function, which you see is level here. And uh, so this is the diapinknel, the true diapinknel uh, stream function uh, showing true diapinknel uh, downwelling and upwelling. Now this, this is what we, on the top of the slide shows that this is uh, reverse engineered into uh, atmosphere ocean forced uh, water mass transformation, the thermodynamic forcing, the uh, Valine spirit superman method, plus uh, whatever is left over, which is internal mixing beneath the mixed layer. Uh, water mass tr transformation in that in that form. So the two right panels uh, sum together to make the the second panel, and of course the surface forced uh, transformation is all in the mixed layer. And so these are all horizontal streamlines beneath the mixed layer, and uh, the difference is internal mixing. Notice notice that in, in the subpolar um, overturning cell, there's a return. Uh, at, uh, you have to sort of squint to see it's in sort of 40 to 50 degrees north, which is the transition zone between the two gyres, the subtropics and the subpolar region, uh, where the North Atlantic current meets the, uh, is supplied by the Gulf Stream. So there's, that's an interesting, a very interesting region. And uh, uh, we'll talk about the return internal mixed cells uh, in the subtropics. Um, here we are, same diagram again um, with some arrows on it, but just to blow up that we're now going to look at the subtropical latitudes in this overturning cell, which is um, 18 degree water, subtropical mode water. But notice that it returns at uh, lower latitude. And so we're in this uh, subtropical gyre. This is potential vorticity, nicely homogenized on the 26.4 surface um, depth of uh, two to 400 meters. And uh, that's uh, this, whoops. Right, so, um, I'm, oh yes, I see what I'm doing. Uh, the dashed line I put across here is to identify a particular density surface we want to look at. And this is um, uh, to chase down the diapicnal velocity, WD, upwelling and downwelling. Downwelling is blue, uh, upwelling is red. And there is the map. What, uh, what you see is uh, on this particular surface, which is uh, in the upper 200 meters of the water column, is a total uh, upwelling and downwelling pattern, which is uh, blue cooling, largely um, atmosphere driven. The Gulf Stream is cooling as it flows north. And south of the Gulf Stream is uh, in the subtropical mode water region is also cooling. But there's a band of upwelling warming to the south of that, which is uh, which is uh, uh, extends down into the tropics. And um, what we now do is separate this into uh, the total, which was what we just saw, and then uh, that's equal to the sum of the thermodynamic uh, air sea buoyancy flux induced uh, surface forced component in the middle and the internally mixed uh, remainder, which is uh, the lower right. So you see this largely blue um, in the, the surface force part, largely cooling and sinking, but the return uh, circuit is spread diagonally across the, sub the subtropics, upwelling due to internal mixing. And this, is, well, this, is, uh, this red upwelling is warming during spring restratification and also involves the northward Eklund transport, those two combined effects. Um, another feature of the surface force buoyancy flux is to remember that the outcrops move with the seasons. So this is the winter outcrop down in the subtropics as far south as you can be. But in the summer, it goes far up north here, and it's largely warming in summer, cooling in winter. And so that explains the blue and the red pattern here. The internally mixed part is, is, uh, is concentrated in the uh, late winter restratification. Uh, in springtime. And that's a process involving mesoscale eddy mixing as well as uh, Ekman forced uh, processes. 
Um, so, and, the, and also the black condors here are the depth of the annual mean depth of this density surface. So you get a feeling for the shape of this particular density surface deepening in the core of the uh, subtropical gyre and showing up to the outcrops to the east. So the seasonal variation is the key to all this. Uh, and if we go on to 52 West, I'll just go back and show you where 52 West is. It's this dash line here. So we're going to take a, cut, a section across that and look at the annual cycle. So here we have the annual mean in, in cross section from uh, 5 North to 45 North. The Gulf Stream is at the right. And the blue is the uh, downwell and cooling in winter. And the red is the, is the, uh, <coughs> the upward rebound of that circulation. And this is averaged over the entire year. You see this diagonal upwelling warming region reaching down towards the equator. Um, so let's just play that from August. This is the seventh month. And just, just look at the right-hand panel. The seventh month, uh, nothing much is happening. It's August. Um, uh, sorry, July. July is the seventh month. Eight is August, nothing much. September, we begin to see some convection up near the Gulf Stream. Um, we just, in October, it's a bit deeper. November, deepening further. December, deepening to 200 meters or so, and, and some internal mixing beneath. We're excited a lot. There are a lot of mesoscale eddies in the region, and they, uh, and they are stirring uh, at all seasons. And uh, January, deepening to 250 meters. And finally, February is the strongest cooling, reaching 300 plus meters. So this is the wintertime maximum. It's all blue, all sinking. But now the restratification begins quickly. Notice there's a lot of eddy activity. And where you see strong slopes, you have uh, lateral mixing parameterized with a coefficient of 30 meters squared per second, which is producing red and even more red uh, upwelling warming. These are very spiky because they're related to eddies, and indeed the cooling is spiky. So this, it, here in the Labrador Sea, we see rapid restratification because eddies are small and they have steep slopes. Um, May, the, re, the restratification is very strong. And finally, it calms down into July, into June and July. So that's the annual cycle. And um, I just want to point out the model seems to perform uh, very nice. I'm going back to uh, back to the beginning here, because we use a MIMOC Argo data set and compare that with HICOM, the two panels on the left. And uh, the mixed layer depth is, uh, will be moving as I go through the seasons. You can see it deepening now in both the observations and the model. And I think the reconstruction is quite, uh, quite satisfactory. We know there's a lot of decadal interannual variability in this process, but MIMOC is a, is a, is a compendium of, uh, of about 10 years of Argo data. So that's the structure of the seasonal cycle, which produces those diagrams. And um, the, if we integrate this pattern uh, eastward uh, between 15 north and 30 north across the basin, uh, the diapintinal upwelling and downwelling, we, have, we can accumulate the entire uh, AMOC stream function. But, so we integrate from across longitude from west to east to the eastern boundary of Africa in this latitude band. And the total uh, dipinknel transport is the black curve, and it, it totals three spray drifts. Uh, the surface force part in green is downward, uh, two spray drifts. And the, sorry, right, and the internal, mix, and the internal mixing component is uh, rises up to nine spare drips. So those, those three are working uh, with each other to produce the AMOC stream function. There's a very interesting feature, um, which I, well, I'm not sure I could, I better go back here. Um, <laughs> well, I'm going to do it. Sorry. Flicking back to the pattern. Uh, just notice the uh, west of Africa, there's uh, the upwelling of cold water produces a warming uh, in the uh, air sea buoyancy flux forced uh, transformation. And that's just one sphere of, and this is the band of latitudes that we're integrating through. So I'm going to now dart back to where we were. Uh, 
and so um, so if we don't if we don't look at that if we sort of ignore that one square drip of African upwelling we we have uh, we have the contribution of the interior uh, uh, sub subtropical mode water production and uh, and its components the thin lines are actually the upward and downward components of those heavy lines and you can see that they there's a lot of upward and a lot of downward surface forest and uh, similarly for the uh, internally mixed component and so this is an expression of a kind of walker cell east-west uh, variation of uh, of the water mass transformation which is invisible in the in the AMOC stream functions uh, so we have 2.1 square drips uh, net which is 3.3 square drips upward minus 1.2 square drips downward and so this is 50 percent larger than the overturning seen in the over in the AMOC stream function and that's one of the major conclusions of my talk is the uh, the east-west cells and sort of walker cells uh, have are turning water masses uh, at a much greater rate than the AMOC stream function would suggest. So you can look at another time perhaps at the at all the other different uh, density surfaces. The one we just looked at is it's circled in green here. So um, I'm uh, close to the end of my allotted time, but uh, as usual, I have only gotten halfway through the talk. So I, what I want to do is uh, briefly summarize the the other end of this uh, story which is the subpolar gyre and look at this density surface in dashed uh, white here so here we have a downwelling in the high latitudes and uh, we know about that uh, labrador sea convection largely and we have dense overflows coming out from the nordic seas but uh, but the actual maximum of the amoc stream function which is often used as an index of, of amoc is actually shared with a basin scale, uh, a gyre scale overturning cell. And, and only 16 or 17 square drips are making it down to, across the equator, as, as you know. Uh, but we've got an amplitude here of 22 or 23 square drips of overturning. And so we want to actually look at that. And if we proceed around the subtropical gyre, um, the subpolar gyre, uh, at increasing density, we see downwelling uh, in the sub in subpolar mode waters, uh, as in Brambilla and Tally's very nice papers, uh, and then ending up in the Labrador Sea at uh, say 27.68 uh, sigma theta. So this is cooling sinking of Labrador Sea water annually average. Notice also in the transition zone of the Gulf Stream North Atlantic Current, there's very important uh, um, dilution uh, warming of Labrador Sea water as it passes in the uh, in underneath the North Atlantic current um, at that latitude and uh, the warm and cold branches are uh, doing intense interior mixing there so if we look at that um, if we look at that uh, one surface that I mentioned in the center of the Labrador sea uh, cell this is the total um, upwelling downwelling pattern sinking in the Labrador sea rising in a ribbons uh, surrounding it and uh, that's equal to the sum of the air sea flux induced part which is largely cooling and then the in part due to internal mixing which is both cooling and warming in a sort of donut of, of overturning cell so this is the deconstruction of the amox stream function in the subpolar latitudes and once again pointing to this transition zone which i won't have time to talk about but is in our uh, paper which is now submitted to jpo couldn't read about it there. And uh, this again is the is all of the other density surfaces in this latitude, which I won't have time to talk about, but I'll leave these slides for people to look at. The main fe a, a really interesting feature which our moderator might be interested in is because uh, Mike Spall and and and, and uh, <laughs> Bob Descartes have worked so much on the boundary near boundary convection in the Labrador Sea. It's very visible here. This is the surface forced part, and it's and this is the interior mixing part. And so, and and actually, these ribbons contribute a lot of the integrated AMOT stream function, even though they're really boundary current and uh, near boundary uh, uh, intensification of the process. So we do the exact same thing of integrating. This is wrong. This is not 15 north to 30 north. This is uh, you know 55, 50 to 65 north. 
we integrate the stream function to get the total AMOX. Uh, we integrate the upline downline to get the total AMOX stream function uh, minus six square drips here. And uh, uh, it's really it, within the Labrador C, uh, the downward transformation is about 14. Uh, sorry, I can't read the screen here. 14 square drips and upward is about six. So our, uh, again, the, our conclusion of this of this whole study really is that uh, we have about 60% more um, overturning in the subpolar latitudes than in AMOX stream function because of the east-west cell. And the east-west cell in the subtropics is just typically 50% stronger than the AMOX stream function. The, the actual processes of uh, this uh, restratification, which I've talked about, are beautiful to look at in an eddy resolving model. Here's a snapshot of the eddies restratifying the Labrador Sea from the south and also from uh, boundary current eddies streaming into the sea, which we've looked at with sea gliders and with uh, the Canadian AR7W section. The eddy kinetic energy shows the uh, offshore flow of that, western, of that West Greenland current, which does this work. So, um, right, you will want to start concluding your remarks soon. I don't know when that was written, actually. <laughs> okay, I know, I know I'm over time here. Uh, but those are, I think I've given you the important messages of, this, uh, of these two basin scale overturning cells. Um, we, we can look at the overturning stream function across the Labrador Sea, the, war, the, the inflow of uh, velocity 20 centimeters per second on the near water in the north of the Labrador Sea, the outflow along, this is along Greenland, the outflow across AR7W of the along, along Hamilton Bank Labrador. They're uh, similar, but they've changed density. The overturning stream function in Z space is only one square drop, but in, with a vertical coordinate of potential density, the overturning stream function is 10 square drops. So you know there's a big argument about how much Labrador seawater is produced, and this is part of the analysis that begins to clarify that. And the, the same accumulation uh, story is is there that we've done at the low latitude. So I won't give you any more detail and just conclude, uh, not going to read all this list, but I want, I want to just say, give you one example of why this is all important, uh, why it matters. It, it ties in with meridional heat transport and salt freshwater transports, tracer transports, because the east-west structure is there and it, and it works with the lateral wind-driven eddies, thermodynamic interaction of AMOC with the wind spun gyres and equipment pumping. And to, to understand this, one has to do this, this in three dimensions. A precursor to everything I've said today you, is in Marshall, Jemos, and Nielsen, 1999, by the way, a beautiful paper, which was addressing this very same problem with earlier uh, uh, and less resolved models. And also, um, a paper that we wrote in J Climate in 2016. So that's a, there's, there's a many reasons why we think this 3D structure is important. One, I would just, I will just, um, I will just show you one slide on is Delworth and Zhang, who gave a a, a webinar in uh, June of 2016, I think something like that, in which a um, couple climate models um, showed their CM 2.1 and others uh, showed Labrador Sea convection with its decadal variability due to the North Atlantic Oscillation, causing, um, it went in a strong mode of positive NAO, that strong cooling of the Labrador Sea, which we observe very, uh, very uh, strongly, <laughs> very, uh, with probably the best uh, observations of, of the world ocean in terms of uh, decadal variability accelerates the AMOC, warms SST by bringing warm tro tropical waters northward, and through the ice melt that that produces, it warms the atmosphere by uh, more than one degree in the northern hemisphere. So this is a remarkable conclusion um, from this story, and from this related to our story, because the Labrador Sea and its, and its, uh, and its downwelling and upwelling is what we're trying to Diagnose. I'm flipping through to find just those slides of Tom Delworth, if they're there. Or oh, there's there went Mike's full slide. Sorry about all this. It's here somewhere. Oh my golly, iodine 129. Um, it's coming. 
I feel it coming. Warming of the atmosphere by a 20-year time scale anomaly of positive, uh, uh, a positive and negative NAO, but this is for the positive phase of the NAO. This is the surface warming of the atmosphere to greater than one degree over much of the northern hemisphere due to the acceleration of AMOC by imposing an air-sea heat flux anomaly like uh, the ones produced really by the NAO and of the same amplitude, two standard, standard deviations of the observed. And the SST anomaly after nine years of sudden NAO shift looks very like what Serpa Haken and I mapped uh, in the late 2000s, the largest uh, warming event of the last 60 years in the Atlantic. So that's my talk, and uh, I apologize that for having the the PowerPoint disease uh, incurable of too many slides, but uh, thank you very much. So thank you, Peter. We do have time for a few questions. So if you would like to ask a question, you can either type your question into the chat feature or indicate by raising your hand that you'd like me to unmute you.